Hi everyone, so let's now compare economic growth and GDP growth versus economic development via the HDI Human Development Index. Now, in this lesson, we're going to break this down into the definitions, looking at the measurements that are used, as well as the advantages, disadvantages, and evaluative points. Now, it could well be you get an essay which actually focuses on looking at HDI for LEDCs, perhaps, uh, but then asks whether that's relevant to MEDCs. And of course, MEDCs generally focus on GDP growth. So let's dive into this. Right, so first up, when it comes to economic growth, it's an increase in economic output, okay? It's about producing more goods and services and thereby increasing incomes. It's measured, of course, according to uh, total gross domestic product. Now, this should really reflect real values so that you adjust the information for inflation. Uh, nominal GDP doesn't necessarily tell you, of course, how great the growth in the economy is. If prices are rising significantly, then nominal GDP growth isn't going to be terribly helpful. Now, of course, you can use GDP per capita as well, and that allows much fairer comparisons between countries because you can actually assess uh, income levels uh, based on the population. So this, remember, GDP divided by the population of the country. Now, in contrast, we can see with economic development, it's about improving well-being and quality of life enjoyed by the citizens of the country. Now, you would also hope that that would uh, bring improvements with living standards. So here we've got the Human Development Index as our key measurement. Now, this, of course, looks at life expectancy uh, as an index value and then education uh, as well as the income. So it's a broader measure. We can see that quite clearly. It's, it encompasses two other areas which are not factored in, and that is, of course, about the health and the actual education provided. So what are the advantages when it comes to increasing economic growth? Well, at least higher income, higher profits. That can provide a fiscal dividend for the government and improve public services that are provided uh, to uh, the, the population of a given country. Now, of course, living standards would continue to improve as well, and that's a further advantage. Now, here we can see some of the uh, advantages of focusing on HDI. So now you're focusing on these broader issues about development, okay, and the well-being and quality of life enjoyed by your citizens. It's a broader measure, as we could see, and it means that you can focus attention on areas that are performing more weakly. So if you know you need to address education as uh, a key means of developing uh, your economy and developing your population, uh, then that's, that's obviously identified within the HDI index. Now, disadvantages, well, of course, there could be uh, income inequality and uh, negative externalities as a result of this economic growth taking place. Uh, that could be, uh, of course, increased levels of pollution as output increases. Uh, there's also, for LEDCs, perhaps a chance of uh, becoming dependent upon your primary products as a means of actually generating growth. Now, that can pose a number of problems that we've already seen. We've seen that there's price volatility, that the terms of trade are likely to uh, decline over uh, extended periods. And so th there are no a number of problems uh, in relation to that for LEDCs. So when it comes to the HDI, well, this is about a longer term change really as well, isn't it? Uh, so if you do improve the actual uh, healthcare in a country, uh, it may, may actually take time before that's actually reflected in life expectancy. Uh, now, divergences within countries will also exist, and some areas can be more difficult to provide for. So those living in the most rural communities may still struggle to a a access good quality education, even though a lot of investment may take place in terms of providing that. Uh, so there can be those wide divergences. So overall evaluation, well, we've got to actually uh, question the sustainability of any economic growth that's taking place. Uh, how sustainable is that economic uh, development? 
Uh, we've also got uh, this point about equality of opportunity. Does equality of opportunity truly exist so that potentially everyone could benefit from increased economic growth? And then what about uh, the importance of uh, economic growth versus economic development to uh, economic agents? That could include the government. What is the government really focused on doing? What do they want to achieve and why? Uh, now, contrast that with perhaps the citizens of a country. Well, citizens of a country may actually be more focused on uh, economic development as a broader concept and improving these areas here. Okay, uh, evaluative points in relation to HDI. Well, what about the quality of education that's actually provided? So it's one thing actually providing that education, but how good is it? Uh, we've got other factors to consider. Uh, that aren't considered within this as well. So that, of course, could uh, represent political freedom uh, as well as uh, a, a country's ability to actually, or individual's ability to actually express themselves and be tolerated for what they believe in. Uh, now, um, so it doesn't include everything. That's what we're really uh, suggesting there. Uh, and what about the relevance and uh, importance of statistics? Because why is this so important to actually focus on developing, uh, on developing a good measurement here when it doesn't actually help to feed people and surely that should be the primary objective. But then again, how do you know how desperately you need to uh, feed certain populations? Well, perhaps by checking those life expectancy statistics. Okay guys, great stuff. I hope that's been helpful. See you next time.